God, it ought to be in a trough, not on a bloody tray. <laughs> Six bullets of a slope in like <laughs> Oh, spuds. <laughs> Yes, madam. Mr. Revley is in the south wing. Ask him to come to my office immediately. Certainly, madam. to me. Oh, well, it would, wouldn't it? And what's that supposed to mean? Oh, th this swill is perfectly all right. Her cons. Oh, come on, Mavis. If it were champagne and caviar, you'd find something to moan about. No, well, would you eat it? It's as good as what we get in a staff canteen, oh. believe me. Come on, Mona. We're all bloody starving, waiting on you. Watch out, darling. Your trotters are showing. <laughs> oh, cow. All right, that's enough, you two. If you want to complain about the food, Smith, you know the procedure. Heaven knows you've used it often enough. Now move along. I can't stand that woman. What did she say what it was about? Familiarity? I am not against the star fraternising with the inmates, you understand. But I do disapprove of them being over-familiar. I'm afraid I don't see what you're getting at, Governor. Don't you, Mr Radley? No. Then I'll underline it with a crashing cliché that even you should understand. Familiarity breeds contempt. Am I to understand that you think I personally act towards the inmates with a familiarity? Yes. I see. Then may I ask, with respect, Governor, what specific incidents you have in mind? There have been several, but if you want me to be specific, I was in South Wing not ten minutes ago and I observed your conversation with Johnson. And? And the laughter. Look, let me get this right. Are you saying that you object to me laughing? Don't be ridiculous. She was telling me a joke. I laughed. What's so terrible about that? I am suggesting you do not exchange jokes with the inmates. We were not exchanging jokes, Governor. And I must say, I resent being treated like some inexperienced probationary officer. Then stop behaving like one. Oh, I'm sorry. Sit down, Mr. Adley. Please. No, if I'm on the mat, I may as well adopt the customary position. Well, that isn't necessary. Please, do sit down. All right. Perhaps I have been over-fussy, but you as deputy governor have... And a man. Yes. And contrary to what you may think, I have nothing against men. In that place. Oh, come on now. Don't be churlish. All right. I admit it. I do think that male staff are unsuitable in a woman's prison. But that is something out of my control. What I can control and what I intend to control is the way this prison is run. I see. Do you, Mr. Radley? Or do you just think I'm being bloody-minded? I'm not a fool, you know. I have been trained for this position. As have I, Governor. Then you should know that familiarity leads to indiscipline and disrespect. With respect, Governor, I have been with this prison for three years and I do not find that to be the case. That is a matter of opinion. Yes. Well, I'm obliged to you for this conversation, Governor. In future, I shall do my best to avoid your disapproval. Mr. Radley, I don't want you to leave here resenting me. I know the value of having the respect of my staff. But I'm not going to get that by being hypocritical, now am I? Believe me, it is not my intention to undermine your authority, nor to tread on your ego. Well, that's a comfort, at least. Well, I hope when you get to know me better, you'll believe it. I hope so too, Governor. Mr. Radley, how are Mrs. Radley and the children? Oh, they're fine, thank you. I'd like to meet them one day. Yes. Yes, we must arrange that. Take some. No, maybe you shouldn't. You need them for yourself, dear. Go on, take some. I earn three times as much as you do working in that damn shop. 
Oh, God knows, that's a pittance. Oh, well, if you insist. But I don't know why you should be so kind to an old biddy like me. Oh, wow. Come on, Smith, back to work. Bloody slave labour, more like it. See you later then, Dolly. Don't wear your mop out, will you? OK, love. Thanks again for the ciggies. Here, Dolly. You know what she's in for, don't you? What? Who? Oh. Your pal with the roll-ups. Mavis? Yeah, that's her real name. Outside, she called herself Penelope Bishop. She meant like she's one of them posh, wet do-gooders. Do you know what her name was? Well, none of us really are Cosmic Angels, love. True. But there are some things that are out of order, in or out, ain't there? Like what? Like thieving off old-age pensioners? Mavis? That's right, love. She used to make out she's from the welfare seat to get into their houses, and then she'd rob them blind. Slag. I don't believe it. Yes, you do, love. Hey, I've got no reason to lie, have I? Look, I'm just telling you so you can watch out for her. If she's handing out snap to you, there's a very good reason for it. Feet! Don't hang about! Do yourself a favour, love. Blank her out. Come on, now. Hurry up. Want to talk about it? Come on, girl, pass them up. Get it going. Bloody mind us. Oh, my God, it's all so bored. Here she goes again. Don't you ever stop moaning. Only a moron like you could work happily away at the totally undemanding. Yeah, and slags like you use their brains to con old people out of what little they've got. She's still at the same game in here. You see her trying to get into old Dolly Gray? Not that old Dolly's got anything worth having. Except maybe her pension book. <laughs> How many times have I told you? Change the water frequently. Look at that floor. It's disgusting. You've made it dirtier than it was before. Sorry, miss. Yes, that's what you always say. But it's not good enough, is it, if you continue to do it? No, miss. All right, then. Change the water and do that bit again. Yes, miss. Funny I should be telling you this, of all people. Yes. Why is that, do you think? Perhaps because we've both suffered similar disappointments. You didn't get your governorship, and I, well... Didn't get my job as Depp. Yes. I like to think it's not you, personally, that I resent. Oh, I know. At least I think I know. I'm not going for another interview like that, believe me. I may have to think about packing it in. Oh, that's stupid. Is it? You've worked hard to get where you are. Maybe, but it's not where I want to be. Don't you mean where you think you should be? OK. Same difference. Well, I never thought I'd hear myself say it. But if it's of any importance, I happen to think you're good at your job, Charles. Well, thank you, Martha. Don't be too grateful. I'd still like to replace you as deputy. <laughs> I also happen to believe that our new governor is just what this prison needs. It's slack and undisciplined. You didn't like Faye too much, did you? I liked her very much as a person. She was good to me, sympathetic and fair. It's just I didn't entirely agree with all her methods, that's all. 
Does that include familiarity vis-à-vis -vis staff I and inmates? I thought you said over-familiarity was a term she used. Yeah, but it's a matter of definition, isn't it? Yes, but it's her definition and she's the governor. Yeah, and I'm just the dep, right? Right. <sighs> Don't let it get to you, Charles. You're still a man, she's still a woman. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Nature's balance? <laughs> Well, somebody bloody well tore them up. Don't swear at me, Smith. Look, I'm not swearing at you, Miss Parrish. Don't swear in front of me, understand? Yes, I'm sorry. But what are you going to do about them? Well, I'm sorry about your pictures, but I didn't rip them up. And unless the person who did comes forward and confesses, or somebody informs, I don't really see what could be done about it. Oh, marvellous. I bet you if somebody tore up the governor's personal photos, you'd hold a massive inquiry, and you'd damn soon find out who did it. Get out. What? I said, get out of my office. But what have I done? It's not what you've done, it's your manner. It's impertinent and I won't tolerate it. So go before I put you on report for insubordination. Yes, what are you going to do about my pictures? I'll look into that. Now go. Go. What's all that about, then? Somebody went into her cell and ripped them up. Oh, she doesn't have any ideas who? No. Well, I doubt if we'll find out. Oh, somebody may have seen something. That won't make much difference. Oh? Well, she's not exactly popular, is she? She can be difficult. Difficult? Do you have any idea the number of complaints she's made since she's been in here? I ought to, as they usually go through me. Mm. The women of Christendom are the Mona. I know. And what she's in here for doesn't exactly endear her to anyone's heart, does it? No. Inmates or staff. Staff? Oh, well, you know me. I always treat everyone the same. Impartial. That's the only way to be. I'm always telling my officers. Yes, I'm sure. It was about Mavis that I came to see you, strangely enough. I think she might find the tailoring shop more rewarding. But this is terrible. Whoever would do such a thing? Oh, I don't know. But if I lay my hands on them... When you come in from work, you say? Yeah, yeah, all over the bloody floor. That means someone must have done it this afternoon. What makes you say that? Well, you was here dinner time, wasn't you? Oh, yes, but not for long. So any one of those bitches could have come in and done it. My guess is it's that... Joan Fleet or one of her cronies. Is that the one with the frizzy hair? Yeah, sir. Oh. She told me something about you. Oh, yeah? What was that? Oh, about what she was in for, like. I didn't believe her. And what did she tell you I was in for? Conning old people, like. <laughs> it's true. Oh, Mavis, how could you? I don't know. But I did it, and I regret it, and now I'm paying for it. It's like you say, love, none of us are in here because we're angels. Oh, Dolly, you're not going to hold it against me, are you? No, of course oh, not. Oh, good, because I do like you. Hmm. I mean, you're not a bitch, not like the rest of them. Um, are you all right for a smoke? Oh, yes, I've still got a couple of them roll-ups you'll give me well, at dinner look, time. Don't you be shy about asking, will you? Because uh, I have got plenty. Oh, see? thank you, mate. You know, I was just thinking about your photos. Oh, yeah? What about them? Well, it could have been a screw. A screw? Mm. What makes you say that? Well, ever since some governor's new ruling about keeping our pewters tidy, a screw checks on them every day. Well? Well, there was one round here this afternoon. Uh, what's her name? Uh, P.O. Spencer. Spencer? Hmm. No. I mean, I know she doesn't like me very much, but uh, no, I can't see it being Spencer. It'd be more than her job's worth to do something like that. Any ideas? It could be anyone, Miss Parrish. She's not liked you. So I keep being told. Hello, love. All right. Oh, here, Mr. Randall. Uh, not now, Pauline. No, it's only quickly. It'll only take a sec. Um, now, come on, they won't mind. Well, it's all right. I know. Right, Did you hear the one about the Jewish kamikaze pilot? No. Oh, crashed his plane into his brother's scrapyard already? <laughs> like it? Like it? <laughs> I thought you'd like that one. Here, I've got another one. There's this geezer that goes into an hospital. Uh, says to the uh, doctor, later, have you got Pauline, anything I, to I am rather busy. 
Swapping jokes with the inmates again, Mr. Radley? Uh, no, not exactly. Well, did you hear the one about Mavis Smith's photographs? Yes, Mrs. Armitage told me that one. Have you found the culprit yet? No, just discussing it with Mrs. Spencer here. And like Mrs. Armitage, she thinks it's unlikely we will. Yeah, it would have to be Mavis. We'll never hear the end of it. Not you as well. What? It doesn't matter. Keep your ears open. Somebody may let something see. Yeah, if you say so, Miss Parrish. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course I will. What's to do then? Oh, just doing the evening round. Filling in for the governor. Hey. What else is the deputy for? My mum pulled back. <laughs> Smith, this application for change of labour. You forgot to sign it. Oh, yeah. I'll do it now. Um, could I borrow your pen, please? Thank you. Thank you. Come in. You wish to see me, Governor? Ah, oh, yes, Mr. Radley. I shall be very busy this coming week. I'd like you to take over my routine duties, rounds, applications, etc., until I can get back to them. Right. That will be all. Thank you. Oh, yes. Well, um... Gray, what do you mean creeping up on me like that? Oh, I'm sorry, miss. I've told you before. Shoes, not slippers on the wing. Oh, sorry, miss. Well, what do you want? I've run out of soap powder, miss. All right. Come with me to the office and I'll get you some. you could find yourself in serious trouble if you persist with this ridiculous accusation, Smith. Look, I'm just telling you what I believe to be the truth, Miss Parrish. You wanted to see me, Miss Parrish? Yes. Smith here has had an ounce of tobacco stolen from her cell. Oh? When? This afternoon, while I was at work. When did you discover it was oh, gone? This evening, naturally. As soon as you came in from work? No, shortly after tea. I kept it in my locker. Anyway, I went to get it, and it was gone. The point is, Mrs Armitage, she seems to think that an officer took it. And what, may I ask, brings you to that conclusion? Well, since I had my photos ripped up, I've been slamming my cell door when I'm out of the wing. Only an officer with a key would be able to open it. The officer she has in mind is Mrs Spencer. Principal Officer Spencer? That's ridiculous. Well, she is the one who checks the cells in the afternoon, isn't she, Chief? Now, listen, Smith. Just a moment, Mrs Armitage. 
How do you know that it was Mrs. Spencer on that particular duty this afternoon? You weren't here. Well, it was, wasn't it? Well, that duty could fall to any of the wing officers. It depends on who's available. Nevertheless, it was Mrs. Spencer this afternoon, wasn't it? Answer the AG's question. How do you know? Look, it isn't difficult to find out, is it? There are plenty of cleaners about. And why couldn't it have been one of the cleaners that took your tobacco? If indeed you had any, which I'm prepared to doubt. Well, of course I had some. What do you think I am? Go and check with the canteen Don't star. speak to me like that. As I was saying, Miss Parrish, to get into my cell, you need a key. I think you'd better get Mrs Spencer in here, Chief. I don't no, think I think we not... ought to hear what she has to say about this. I mean, it's possible that she may have left the doors open or something after examining the cell. Well, I'm afraid Mrs Spencer has went off duty at five o'clock. She won't be back until tomorrow morning. Oh. Well, it's of any significance. My cell door was locked when I came back from the workshop. Which of the cleaners told you that Mrs Spencer examined the cells this afternoon? Oh, I'd rather not say if you don't mind, Chief. I did promise I'd keep her out of it. And anyway, this is my decision. Decision? What do you mean, decision? To report what I believe has happened. Believe? Believe? Did you see Mrs Spencer go into your cell? Well, no. Did you see her steal your tobacco? No. No. And yet you have the gall to stand there and accuse one of my officers, a principal officer at that, of stealing your tobacco? This must be brought to the attention of the governor, Miss Parrish. Smith, do you really want to pursue this? How do you mean, Miss? You haven't the slightest bit of evidence that Mrs Spencer took your tobacco, have you? If you don't mind, I say... No, just a minute. Well? Well what, Miss? If you make allegations against an officer, you're required to do so in writing, and the onus of the proof is on you. If you're unable to substantiate your claim, you may be charged with making a false statement, and this could be dealt with by the Board of Visitors. I see. I don't think you do, but if you want to make her allegation official, I will issue you with a piece of foolscap and you can put it in writing now. And you know what the procedure is after that. Well, perhaps I have acted a little too hastily, miss. Very well. You may go. And I promise you I'll look into the matter if you're missing tobacco. Oh, thank you. Well, if you'll pardon me for saying so, I think I deserve an explanation. I'm afraid I can't really give you one, Chief. So, but I have a feeling that something a little odd is going on. But to let her get away with making malicious allegations against a member Knowing of the staff... Smith, she won't let you from here. In the meantime, why don't we nose round the cleaners? See which one of them gave Smith this idea. Your idea? What? Oh, it's you, Dolly. Come in. How'd it go, then? Oh. I had to swallow it, didn't I? How's that then? Because that slag parish made it perfectly clear that if I made an official complaint, they'd nick me. Nick you? Yeah. What for? False and malicious accusations against a screw. Oh, bastards. You can't win with them, can you? That's not fair. I saw her take it. Well, come with me now and tell them that then, will you? Well, I'd like to, Maeve, straight. But they'd just nick me as well, and what good would that do? Oh, I don't want no trouble. I'm too old for all that. And you know what that dog's like to give you if they think you're having a go at them? Mm. Yeah. I know all right. Oh, it's all right, love. Forget it. <clears throat> you uh, didn't mention it was me that said, did you? No, no, I didn't. I was bloody well tempted to, though, believe me. Can I come in? Oh, yeah. Hello, Miss Clark. Dolly? How are you? I'm all right, thank you, miss. Good. I just wanted a word with me. Oh, moment. that's all right. I'll, I'll toddle off then. I won't be long. Oh. Have you seen Mark? Today. That's what I've come to tell you. Is he OK? Yes. You've got nothing to worry about, maybe. He's in perfect health, so I'm quite happy. Oh, how can he be? Stuck in a kid's home. Doesn't he miss me? Well, I would have asked him, and he... You know what two-year-olds are like when it comes to holding a conversation. I'm all he's known. He must fret. Look, I had a long chat with the superintendent. He did fret about it first, naturally, but I assure you, he's settled down. He's just fine now. It's that he did that more easily than you imagine. What do you tell the fish with him? No. It's not what I've done. <laughs> 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 oh dear, how can I concentrate?
if you keep telling me jokes. Tactics, ain't it, love? Tactics. Ian, did you hear the one about the Irish kamikaze pilot? No. Flew 12 successful missions? Well, well. <laughs> the way I tell him. Can I have a word with you for a moment, Dolly? Would you like to see me about, Mrs Armitage? You're on fairly good terms with Mavis Smith, aren't you? Well, I wouldn't say that, really. I see her occasionally, like. Did you happen to mention to her this afternoon that Principal Officer Spencer was examining the cells? No, ma'am, not me. Why should I? You haven't said anything to her about Mrs Spencer concerning anything? No, no. Hmm. Tell me, Dolly, who are the other cleaners on this wing? Have you any proof? It wouldn't make any difference if I had, would it? You say the AG threatened to put you on a charge. Now, are you sure? Well, not in so many words. No, they're too slippery for that, aren't they? But her meaning was perfectly clear, I can assure you. Oh, well, Mavis, I don't know what to say. It's a difficult decision to make. If you'll take my advice, unless you have absolute proof and sufficient evidence against Mrs Spencer, I wouldn't pursue it. I'm sure she did it. Look, I know she did it. Well, if that's how you feel, you know what to do, don't you? Is there any reason why she should make such accusations about you? I'm sure I don't know what you mean, Miss Parrish. Well, have you antagonised her in any way? Not to my knowledge, no. <sighs> Mrs Spencer, no one believes for one moment that you did what she said. Then with respect, Miss Parrish, why hasn't she been charged? And why are you asking me these questions? The allegation hasn't been formalised, but... I am simply trying to find out what prompted her to pick on you in particular. As I've already said, I'm sure I don't know. <sighs> All right. Look, I know how you feel, but there's more to this than meets the eye. So I would appreciate it if you kept quiet about it for the moment, especially don't say anything to Smith. I'm not sure I can do that. She might be spreading this vicious gossip about me throughout the prison. I wouldn't worry too much about that, Mrs Spencer. As you've already said, nobody likes her very much, do they? Oh, Mrs Spencer, the visiting magistrate has just arrived. Mrs Carter was going to take him round, but she's off sick. Would you do it, please? Yes, Chief. Morning. Morning, ladies. Aye, aye. Anyone for the visiting magistrate? Oh, hey, I'd like to see him alone in my cell after lights out. Yeah, very romantic. Just you and him alone with your slot bucket. Visiting magistrate, any applications? Oh, I jumped. Hello, what can I do for you? Oh. Well, I can speak to you privately, can't I? Yes, yes, of course. Well, first, I'd better have your name, haven't I? Smith, sir. Maybe Smith. Maybe Smith. Yes, well, I made a note of it for my report, naturally, but, well, I did find it a bit disturbing. That's why I thought I'd have a word with you first. I'm very glad you did, Mr Parrington. I know the inmate you're talking about. She's a woman who tends to make a lot of complaints. Ah. However, never anything as serious as this. Mm -hmm. To be perfectly frank with you, it's the first I've heard of it. Would you mind if I call in my deputy? Oh, of course not. Locate Mr Radley, would you? Ask him to come to my office immediately. Well, I've had a word with the cleaners. Of course, they all claim no knowledge. Naturally. Mm. Oh, Mrs Spencer, has the visiting magistrate left yet? No, Chief. As a matter of fact, he's with the Governor. It may interest you to know that Smith made some sort of application to him. Why wasn't I told about it? You did say you'd be busy this week, Governor. I didn't want to bother you with it. In any case, I understood from Miss Parrish that the matter had been dealt with. Smith withdrew the allegation. I see. An inmate makes an allegation as serious as this, then changes her mind and we just do nothing. Not exactly. Miss Parrish and I are trying to discover what's behind it all. Has it occurred to you that perhaps she tore up her own pictures and made up the story about the tobacco? Yes, we have considered that. Mrs Forrester, 
I didn't get the impression from this inmate that she was lying about the photographs or the tobacco being stolen. I mean, she may well be mistaken about it being an officer who was responsible, but I would remind you that she wasn't asking me to look into that possibility. I accept that, Mr. Paddington, but you must understand we can't simply ignore an allegation as serious as this. Well, even though she's withdrawn it? Even though she has withdrawn it. But the point of her statement to me is that having made the allegation, it was then implied that a charge of making a false and malicious statement against an officer would be laid against her should she persist with a complaint. Mr. Radley? Well, I can understand how someone like Smith would interpret it, but what in fact she was told was that if the allegation proved to be unfounded, then there was a possibility of her being charged with that offence. I see. Well, maybe she just misunderstood, eh? I wouldn't like to think that my bringing your attention to this will get her into trouble. If it is a misunderstanding, which I feel sure it is, so perhaps if you just have another word with her. Just to clarify things. Goodbye, Mrs. Forrester, Mr. Manley. Mr. Parrington. So that is perfectly clear to you, is it? Oh, absolutely, sir. Now, look here, Smith, don't you adopt that attitude with me. Attitude? What attitude, sir? You know perfectly well what I'm talking about. This is a serious matter. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Nobody's trying to stop you or pressurise you in any way from making a complaint. If you do, it'll be looked into without fear or favour. You have the right. And you know the procedure well enough. But... It's if... all right, sir. I have got the message. Don't interrupt the deputy when he's talking to you. Sorry, sir. If you don't choose to make a formal complaint, then I want no more talk about Mrs. Spencer, either to staff or inmates. Is that clear? Perfectly. All right, you may go. What do you think? Come on, Meg, cheer up. Smith isn't worth upsetting yourself about. How about giving a colleague some advice on how to pass the PO's exam? Starting with the application form. Nobody gave me a hand. Right. Lend us your pen and I'll go it alone. That's funny. What? My pen isn't here. Oh, I hope I haven't lost it. It was a good pen, that. Well, perhaps you left in the PO's office. Maybe. Ah, well. Who wants promotion anyway? Oh, listen, Meg. I think it's disgusting too, but... How is not to reason why? But they've let her get away with it completely. Oh, forget it. I mean, there's no point working yourself into a lather. I must say, I'm a bit surprised. Hey, do you think old Parrington had anything to do with it? The magistrate? Well, you know how soft he is. And one would think we had a bunch of nuns in here, the way he goes up. That's true. Thank God they're not all like him. Quite the opposite, most of them. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Just realistic about scum, like the Smiths of this world. Careful. Look, just because I wear this uniform, it doesn't mean to say I have to join the conspiracy that perpetuates the myth that all women prisoners are poor, misguided fools. Did I ever tell you what happened to my mother one time? Well, you ought to be flattered that she's letting you handle it in your own way. Oh, why is that? Well, at first meeting she held, we were told that as senior staff, we should take on more responsibility and not go running for consultation every time a decision had to be made. I remember vividly. Well, to date, we haven't exactly been encouraged to do that, have we? And do you think her letting me handle this thing on my own is a sign that she meant what she said? Well, isn't it? I don't think so. <laughs> I think she's just testing me, sitting back hoping I'll mishandle it. Oh, really? And I thought that prison paranoia was a preserve of the inmates. All right. Who did it? Who's bloody responsible? You've got the lot of you. You bloody cow. All right, girls, come on, back to your cell. Oh, it certainly is a mess. A mess! Oh, look at it! It's ruined! <laughs> look at this! That was nearly full half a week's wages, and that's me! <laughs> look at this! Look at this! Oh, my curtain! 
Hours, I spent sewing these hours. <laughs> what is it? All right. You wanted proof? Well, you bloody well got it. Proof? What are you talking this? about? This! It doesn't belong to me. Well, who does it belong to, then? It belongs to me, Miss Parrish. Anything to add, Mr. Radley? No, I think we've covered about everything. Miss Parrish? No, Governor. Mrs. Armitage? No, madam, except to emphasize again my firm belief in Mrs. Spencer's explanation regarding that pen. Yes. Very well. Tomorrow I shall be having the monthly meeting with the Board of Visitors. I will inform them of the outcome of this investigation and of my decision with regard to Smith. Governor? Yes, Mr. Radley. Well, if you have anything to say, please say it. Well, it's, it's just a suggestion, you understand, but... I, I was wondering if it might not be preferable if you dealt with the adjudication. Oh, it's out of the question. It's far too serious for me to deal with. Yes, but after all, these incidents have actually happened. And in Smith's mind, at least, Mrs Spencer is responsible. Smith has made an official complaint and we have thoroughly investigated it. And she still persists with her malicious allegations against Mrs Spencer. Her latest move is to refuse labour as a form of protest. Yes. Mr Radley... Are we or are we not agreed that there is no foundation in Smith's allegations? In principle, yes, but... Then I have no alternative but to remand her on a disciplinary report before the Board of Visitors. Try not to be too cynical about it, Mavis. Oh, I'm not cynical about it, Miss Clark. I'm simply sickened by the bloody injustice. Well, she did it. I know it and they know it. I know that's what you believe. Well, you too, eh? No, but it's uh, only your belief against Mrs. Spencer's word, isn't it? Hmm. Maybe. Of course it is. The whole thing is a monstrous, great big farce, isn't it? Well, let's say it's a system that hasn't been geared to give the inmate the advantage. Who's asking for an advantage? I'd settle for a sporting chance. I mean, I'm the one that's been abused, right? And yet I end up the defendant in what's nothing better than a bloody... Kangaroo court. Oh, it's not exactly a court, is it? Oh, yes, it is. It's a court, all right, and I'm on trial. Only the big difference in here is that I have none of the rights that one is automatically entitled to outside. No legal representation, nothing. I mean, I'm not allowed to defend myself. You'll be permitted to have your say. No, I won't. I won't. I'll be allowed to speak when I'm spoken to and then told to shut up if they don't like what they hear. My God... The hypocrisy of it is almost perfect. Being able to hide behind the Official Secrets Act. You know, they're not accountable to anybody. Well, they're accountable to the prison department, the Home Office. Yeah, but it's all the bloody same firm, oh, isn't come it? come on, it's not that bad. You don't really believe that, do you? Well, yes. I mean, I... I do have some doubts about the imbalance in these sort of internal proceedings. <laughs> Imbalance. The defendant is defenceless, and you call that an imbalance? Look, Mavis, I'm simply trying to... Oh, I don't know. I know, to justify the behaviour of your establishment colleagues. That's not fair. I didn't create the system. I may be attached to it. I wouldn't say I'm part of it. Yeah. Well, I can see that. Still... Good luck, Mr. There is one bit of encouraging news I can give you. I've heard that the magistrate who will be in charge of the proceedings is Parrington. At least he has a soft spot for the women in here. Mm. Wonderful. Anything you wish to add to that, Mr. Radley? I don't think so, sir. Right, will you send in Mrs. Spencer? Yes, sir. Mrs. Spencer. Well? You were right, the way Parrington's handling this. You'd think it was us before him on a charge. There's no doubt it is your pen, Mrs. Spencer. None at all, sir. And you say you lost it the day before Smith's cell was ransacked? That's correct, sir. Where'd you lose it? 
If I knew that, sir, I wouldn't have lost it. I use my pen quite frequently during the course of a day. I must have put it down somewhere and forgotten to pick it up. Mm. The last time I remember using it was in my office. Your office? The PO's office on the wing, sir. Do you think someone took it from your office? I don't know, sir, but if I did leave it there, it's possible. Well, don't you lock your office when you're not in there? Not always, sir. It's a general purpose office. Other officers use it, and the inmates are in and out of it all day for various reasons. Yes, I see. Now, oh, Smith has said that the day her tobacco was stolen, her door was locked before she went to work and when she arrived back from work. Now, if the tobacco was taken during that period, that raises the question as to how her door was unlocked and then relocked. I mean, the inmates don't have keys, do they? No, sir. But I think there's a simple explanation. Then by all means, explain it for us. Very often, cells that are locked are opened by the wing officer just before the women come back onto the wing from work. Why is that? Usually because we're short-staffed, sir. And the landing officer may be needed for some other duty just at the time the women come back from labour. Well, then how was it relocked? Anyone can lock a cell door, sir. It's on a spring lock. You pull the door to, and it locks automatically. Ah, uh, <clears throat> yes. Well, yes, of course. You have anything you wish to say? Anything to add? No, right. Uh, very well, Mrs Spencer. Uh, well, well, would look, you send um, in, <clears throat> Miss... Could I ask her a question, sir? Oh, you'll get your chance to speak, Miss Smith, after we've heard the evidence. But it'll be too late then, won't it? Miss Smith, I think I ought to make it quite clear to you that this is not a court of law. You have no automatic right to cross-examine a witness. No one here is on oath or anything like that. You are before us on a disciplinary report. It is our duty to hear the evidence in relation to that report and then to decide your punishment if that evidence supports the charge against you. Do you understand? Yes, yes, sir, I understand perfectly. But with respect, if you don't ask the right questions, I don't see how you can arrive at a just now, decision. Miss Smith, I mean, why please, doesn't somebody please. ask her who examined my cells the day that my photos were ripped up, or the day that my tobacco was stolen, or the day that my cell was ransacked? Because I already know that Mrs Spencer was that officer, Miss Smith. Now, would you please remain silent until yeah, you're Yeah, but she hates my guts! Everybody knows that. Ask her. Now, you do your case no good by getting emotional and ignoring my instructions, My Smith. case? I'm not allowed to present my case. This whole thing is a bloody great big farce. Now, listen here, my Oh, God, listen. Absolutely I've got would a witness who being... saw this bitch steal my tobacco. That's a lie. Just a minute, Mrs. I'm sorry, sir, but really, this is too much. Yes, well, let's all calm down, shall we? Now, Miss Smith, who is this person you claim saw Mrs. Spencer take your tobacco? Well, I... I did promise I'd keep her out of it, sir. Why? Why? Well, because they'll conspire to Harris and to nick her like they have me. It's what always happens when you complain about them. I can assure you nothing of that nature will occur. Not while I'm a visitor to this prison. It already has, hasn't it, sir? I mean, I'm here, aren't I? Now, this witness you're talking about, who is she? Well, she's a con like me. Nobody believes the word of a con, do they? I am prepared to listen to her if you'll give me her name. All right, then, that's fair enough. It's Dolly Gray. She's a cleaner on my wing. Oh, Dolly Gray? She said she Mrs. saw me. Mrs Spencer, I'm please. I'm sorry, sir. I must protest. Smith is in here for duping old ladies. She's an expert at it. If Dolly Gray says she saw me steal Smith's tobacco, then it's because Smith put her up to it. Nevertheless, Mrs Spencer, I would like to hear what this alleged eyewitness has to say. Do you think she could be made available, Governor? Miss Rees, would you ask Mrs Armitage to bring Dolly Gray here? And in the meantime, I'll hear Miss Parsons. Send her in, would you, Mrs Spencer? And uh, then you may take a seat here. What do they want to sing for, Chief? You'll find out in a minute, Dolly. Just come along with me. And you're absolutely certain that Mrs Spencer lost her pen the day before Smith's cell was ransacked? Absolutely, sir. Like I said, I asked to borrow it, and that's when she discovered it was missing. Thank you, Miss Parsons. Sir. Mm -hmm. He wants her in now, Chief. Just come along, darling. Beg pardon, sir? I said you have nothing to fear by telling the truth. But I am, sir. I never saw Mrs. Spencer take anything from her cell. But Miss Smith has said that that is what you told her. No, sir. Not me, sir. 
I never said anything of the kind. If that's what she said I told her, then she's a liar, sir. Oh, Dolly. Dolly, tell them the truth, please. They're not going to nick you or anything. Mr. Parrington has promised. I wouldn't lie for the likes of you for a million pound. All right, Dolly, you may go. Back to the wing. Twenty-eight days loss of privileges, fourteen days loss of remission. Thank you. It was too lenient by far, if you want my opinion. It made a nonsense of the whole proceedings. Why, the governor could have given a twenty-eight days loss of remission on an ordinary adjudication. Yeah. And kept the whole thing inside the prison. Well, perhaps next time she'll listen to my advice. Oh, come on. I mean, nobody knew it would be Parrington chairing the board, least of all the governor. And she doesn't know him as well as we do. No. No, don't be too upset about it, Mrs Armitage. It's not the first time the board of visitors have given less punishment than the charge warrants. I doubt it'll be the last. More's the pity. Oh, excuse me. She is not pleased. No. I don't know. There's something very odd about the whole thing. I mean, Smith really believed that Mrs Spencer was responsible, you know. Do you? No, of course not. Oh, she clearly hates Smith, but she's too experienced, too good an officer to attempt anything like that. Mm. What I'd like to know is what old Dolly Gray said in there. No doubt we shall soon find out. The prison grapevine is a wondrous thing. Dolly said that. I saw Maureen Reese told me, and she was in there. Maureen? Oh, Miss Reese, the officer? Yeah. I suppose Smith conned Dolly into lying for her. When he came down to it, Dolly couldn't go through with it. No, I don't think Mavis would have done that. She likes Dolly, looks after her in a way. Bet she isn't too fond of her right now. Mm -hmm. What did Mrs Spencer think of the outcome? You ever hear her swear? Mrs Spencer? <laughs> no, now you come to mention it. She's swearing about this, I can tell you. You see, she thinks that the soft sentence old Parrington gave Smith implies some sort of a doubt about her. You know, as if he's saying, I believe you, Smith, but I'm obliged to find you guilty. Well, if an inmate is put on report, they are, aren't they? Well, there'd be anarchy in here if that wasn't the case. Mind you, you know, it's not hard to understand why Meg Spencer dislikes Smith so much. Isn't it? Well, you know what Smith's in here for. Mm. Well, apparently, Meg Spencer's old mum was the victim of someone like that. Only this was a bloke. Said he was from the gas board. Had the poor old girl downstairs watching the meter while he was upstairs robbing her of her life savings. About 300 quid. Well, she kept it in the shoebox in the wardrobe. No, Miss Clark, I didn't know that. But don't you find it a bit disturbing? No, I don't. Mrs Spencer is a principal officer and she has an impeccable record. As far as I'm concerned, the matter is closed. But somebody did those things to Smith's governor. Yes. And if it's any consolation, I think I know who that somebody was. You know? I said, I think I know. I can't prove it. Now, if you don't mind, I am rather busy. Oh, hello, miss. Dolly, can I ask you something? Yes, of course, miss. Well... Oh, it doesn't matter. Perhaps some other time. 